The more humanity strays from its origin, the more we deny our bond with nature, the farther from perfection we become. We are the only creatures on the planet that use symbols in reference to something else. We use symbols for absolutely everything the mind can conceive of. There is at least one word or icon or gesture to insinuate everything our five senses can detect and then some. But along with this beautiful gift comes a flaw. Most people are unwilling to seek and create their own interpretations of these symbols. Instead, they blindly submit to preconceived definitions and connotations given by sources unknown. Because of this, many things have been predetermined in our understanding of life without our knowledge. Words can be perverted and used to manipulate rather than to inform. Symbols can be used to segregate rather than unite. And those given the responsibility and authority to disseminate information to the public possess the ability to do with it what they choose. Listen carefully. Every 26,000 years, our solar system passes through the 12 zodiac signs. Ancient civilizations such as the Hopi, Egyptians, Cherokee, Apache, and the Mayans were aware of this great cycle and developed calendars according to it. This cycle stems from many different occurrences in nature such as the sun's orbit around Alcyon, the central star of Pleiades, as well as the 260 day cycle of human gestation. This cycle is broken down into five sub-cycles of 5,125 years each, which were thought to have their own age. The Aztec calendar or Mesoamerican sunstone depicted each cycle being destroyed by one of the five elements. The cycle we are currently in is the age of the fifth sun, 3113 BC to 2012 AD. More precisely, this great cycle ends December 21st, 2012. Mayan cultures and civilizations were aware of this end date, and Nostradamus even prophesied about it. For Earth, which we are currently in now, is also known as the movement, shift, evolution, and consciousness. Living Maya timekeepers proclaim that the Earth has been through fire, earth, air, and water. The final element is ether, or center. The Hopi believe that the fourth world of destruction closes and the fifth world of peace begins on December 21st, 2012. The Great Cycle is broken down into what the Mayans believe to be 13 Bactons. Earth began its 13th Bactan in 1618, which was known as the Triumph of Materialism, as well as the Time of Great Forgetting, in the prediction that humanity will lose the awareness of their true bond with nature by means of external possessions. This is where ego and domination became the predominant ambition of the civilized world. Not surprisingly, this time frame was precisely when the worldwide coordination of Pope Gregory XIII forced the 12-month calendar as well as the first mechanical clock onto indigenous peoples. This is what's known as the error in time. Before the inception of the two instruments by the Roman Catholic Church, each year was divided into 13 moon cycles with 28 days each. But the most detrimental part of these two instruments is the insinuation that time was something external, something inorganic and outside the body that we must watch and obey. The 7th century Mayan prophet Pakal Vatan left a powerful message for future generations of evolution. If humanity wishes to save itself from biospheric destruction, it must return to living in natural time. He also foretold of our accelerated technological society and of the damage of our collective divergence from natural law in exchange for material values. Astrology and the studies of the heavens are as old as civilization. Throughout the past several thousand years, new religions have all but replaced the pagan religions of prior years. Man has been so thoroughly fascinated with these objects in the sky that they formed constellations from them and applied stories to them. In Greek mythology, these were personified as the gods. We notice in the structures that still stand to this day that the most ancient of civilizations put forth more wealth, power, time, and effort into the locations of the stars than any other practice. 
This is commonly written off as simple curiosity. But the truth is becoming clear by the day as we close in on the zero year of December 21st, 2012. It is a common misconception that the pagan religion is rarely practiced today. In fact, paganism in its evolution is the most widely practiced form of religion. You may ask yourself how this is possible. The answer is hidden in nearly all of our current popular religions. But who would have the power and the desire to integrate a seemingly long gone religion into such popular opposite denominations? Dr. Adam Weishaupt was born on February 6, 1748 in Ingolstadt in a city in Bayern or Bavaria, Germany. This interesting character was the son of a rabbi and converted to Catholicism after his father's death. After studying French philosophers such as Voltaire, he supposedly learned the teachings of Satanism in the French royal court. World-famous central banker, Mayor Amstel Rothschild of the Rothschild dynasty, chose Weishaupt to create the Coven of Golden Dawn, which to this day is Rothschild's private coven. Amstel Rothschild, for those who are unaware, instigated the American Revolution. America's supposed liberation from Britain. Rothschild instructed Weishaupt to create the ancient illuminated seers of Bavaria. This is better known as the Order of the Illuminati. The name in Luciferian teachings means the bearer of the light, the illuminated, or the enlightened one. The Areopagite, or tribunal, was the inner circle of the supreme order and were the only ones privy to secret meetings. In Nesta Webster's book, The World Revolution, she states, The art of Illuminism lay in enlisting dupes as well as adepts, and by encouraging dreams of honest visionaries or the schemes of fanatics, by flattering the vanity of ambitious egotists, by working on unbalanced brains, or by playing such passions as greed and power to make men of totally divergent aims serve the secret purpose of the sect. People with money were welcomed but kept oblivious to actual secrets. The purpose is to win power and riches, to undermine secular or religious government, and obtain the masters of the world. The goal of the order was and still is to one day deliver the human race from all religion. Progression through the political and religious hierarchy was obtained by blackmail in the form of bribing people in power with sex from local prostitutes. In the 16th and 17th century, high-ranking officials in political or religious organizations were liable to be sentenced to death for such acts. In 1780, Baron Franz Friedrich Kinnigi was recruited. He was the most instrumental person in the marriage of the Masons and the Illuminati. This allowed the Illuminati to expand rapidly with the use of Masonic lodges. On August 29, 1781, Congress of Wilhelmsbad declared the alliance official. Those in attendance were put under oath, never to reveal what took place in that meeting. Comte de Virio, a mason from Martinez de Lodge at Lyons, was questioned about the meeting upon his arrival home. He stated, I can only tell you that all this is much more serious than you think. The conspiracy which is being woven is so well thought out that it will be, so to speak, impossible for the monarchy and the church to escape it. He later denounced the Illuminati. Sir John D. John D. was a servant to Queen Elizabeth Tudor of the Tudor dynasty. John D. was the head of the British Secret Service, the MI5. He was also known for the practice of black magic and his affiliation with the occult. If this is your first time hearing about the occult or are unaware of its dominance in the world to this day, pay close attention. Pagan symbols, gods, rituals, and doctrines are the basis for most every religion practiced throughout the world. The Christian or Catholic symbols of the cross derive from the solstice and the equinox division lines on a zodiac calendar. The word heaven is in reference to what pagan religions referred to as the heavens or galactic bodies and the crossing of the age of Pisces into Aquarius is actually in reference to constellations which interestingly enough occur at the exact same time as the great cycle prophesied by the Maya as well as many other cultures. As said before, pantheistic rituals are prevalent in all monotheistic religions today. Circumcision is a pagan ritual, marking males in a ceremonial fashion. Weddings are pagan by nature in the wearing of a ring which symbolizes the ring of Saturn. Funerals follow the same pagan-derived ritual when a sacred geometrical tomb is placed over a grave to embody and immortalize the spirit. Baptism is a ritual to submerge a child in holy water to symbolize the renewal of life, 
just as rain replenishes the earth. The Holy Grail filled with wine is a representation of the blood that comes from the birth canal during menstruation, not the blood of Christ. This ritual was taken over by the patriarchal society. Males could not give life as women do, so to symbolize a male giving life was to draw blood, which could only be done by injury. In ancient Egypt, the goddess Isis was the personification of wisdom. Pharaoh Akhenaten changed the warship to himself as he proclaimed himself Amun-Re, the sun god. The word Amen at the end of a prayer spawned from the praise given to Amun-Re. From there, the Hebrews left Egypt and traveled north into the Middle East, where they encountered the Canaanites, who worshipped the god of Saturn, El. The merging of these three gods became the name of the land today, which is known as Isis, Re, El, or Israel. 98% of Judaism is based around the worship of Saturn, and the sacred day of worship is Saturday. The worship practice on Sunday is originated from the Egyptians who worship the sun god. Most people simply pass these things off and never question their origins, but this just scratches the surface of the pagan influence over the present day. It is not just found in religions, it is found right here in our own backyard. On January 22, 1783, Congress ratified a contract stating that all bills of credit emitted, monies borrowed, and debts contracted by or under the authority of Congress before the assembling of the United States in pursuance of the present Confederation shall be deemed and considered a charge against the United States for payment and satisfaction whereof the United States and the public faith are hereby solemnly pledged. The party that the U.S. owed these loans to? King George. I hope this paints a picture for you of how Great Britain funded both sides of the revolution. To this day, Great Britain collects taxes from the United States via the IRS. The IRS isn't even an agency of the United States government. If you don't believe me, look up IRS Publication 6209. The FCC, CIA, FBI, and NASA were never part of the United States government. The U.S. government only holds shares of the stock in various agencies. Social security numbers are also issued by the U.N. through the IMF. The Civil War, which lasted from 1861 to 1865, was also instigated by Amschel Rothschild to divide the United States and force it into debt with the central bank. The goal was to put the country of the U.S. back into the hands of Britain through huge loans taken out for munitions. To do this, it was crucial to put a controversial issue in limbo such as slavery. Knowing full well that the Declaration of Independence would create an uproar among southern states that depended heavily upon slave labor, it was signed in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania by 35 people, 33 of whom were Freemasons. John Brown was a Mason and a Rosicrucian who was brought to power by William Lloyd Garrison and Senator Charles Sumner, both descendants of the Illuminati bloodline. With the help of the New York Times, John Brown was built up to be a hero in the anti-slavery movement. Ulysses S. Grant, former president, was born Hiram S. Grant. This name was given to him by his father, Master Mason Jesse Root Grant. Jesse Root Grant worked for John Brown's father and then went on to work for E.A. Collins, one of the 13 Illuminati bloodlines. Ulysses S. Grant was brought to power rapidly with help from Collins. From April 1861 to May 1864, Grant went from the rank of private to commander-in-chief of the entire Union Army. Once Grant was appointed president, his cabinet consisted of eight Freemasons, including Alfonso Taft, which was William Taft's father, who was also an ancestor of Bill Clinton. Jonas Mills Bundy was one of the 13 Illuminati bloodlines, who was also the presidential advisor to Grant as well as the next two presidents. And cabinet member Columbus Delano was Franklin Delano.